Hi, welcome to this tutorial. This set of tutorial will be exploring digital signal processing. So uh, basically creating effects like you probably most familiar with guitar effects from effects pedals and such. But we're going to be creating these in Super Collider and creating a bunch of infrastructure, physical controllers, uh, hooking them up to uh, GUI so we can see feedback and all kinds of nifty stuff like that. OK, so let's get started. Um, and in this uh, tutorial, in this part, we will be discussing buses and groups of Super Collider. So just the basics of buses and groups. And it's kind of an infrastructure. It's a bit of a framework. That's why I'm calling this DSP framework that will allow us to have a really flexible way of doing audio processing and um, control controlling that processing in various ways. OK, so I'm going to start with this diagram. And I'm going to start on the left hand side and explain or talk a little bit about the concept in Super Collider of buses. So it's a lot like what um, a lot of you might be familiar with in, in, the, in terms of patch bay, in actual analog plugging and patching. So a patch bay is basically just a, a series of jacks where you have ins and outs. And so you could put a bunch of ins into it, and then you can patch those ins to a bunch of outs too. Um, oftentimes they're used in you know any kind of arena or um, concert hall, those types of things. So let's say you have 10 speakers in the concert hall. Well, all 10 speakers are plugged in the patch bay and all all the inputs, say 10 mics and various or tape recorder, CD player or something are all plugged into the patch bay. And then you can just patch the individual um, channels out to the different speakers or the PA or the monitors on stage just by using uh, patch cables, just plugging them in. So if you have, say, a CD recorder, you want to patch it to the front of house, but you also want to patch them into, say, uh, monitors or out into the lobby, uh, you would have a patch bay to do that physical. So a lot of you are probably familiar with that. Now, Super Collider presents the digital equivalent of that. There are uh, virtual buses in Super Collider. And the neat, neat thing about Super Collider is they're not only do they have um, audio buses, but they also have control buses, so you can channel control information as well. So the idea is that basically there's a hub. It's a control hub that you can repatch. Um, and since it's all digital and super collider, you know, you can do it remotely. You can control it with various things. You can hook up various things to do this patching for you, uh, which is great. So you have your basic structure here. You have some kind of input or some kind of source. It goes into the virtual, goes to a virtual bus. And then that virtual bus um, could be one connected directly to one of your speakers, and we'll get into that to a little bit more. Or it could be a bus that goes out. It's just a private bus. It's just empty. It's not been patched anywhere. Okay. And then in this hub, then then you'll repatch it somewhere. So you might, for example, patch it out, and it might go out to one of your speakers. But uh, by putting it to a different bus, you can go to a different speaker. Or it might go out, for example, to uh, an FX. Uh, some kind of effects, reverb, or something like that, and then that can be patched out. And then, it, you know, obviously you can do some feedback, so you can have an input that gets patched into an effects, and you can have it patched back into the bus, so then you can put out either the dry uh, signal from, say, a microphone, or you can put out the, the process signal from the effects. Okay, so just think of this as a hub. Now, since we're dealing with, uh, you know, essentially computer programming for audio, um, we have to deal with the programming side. We have to deal with the computing side of things, okay? The groups uh, are programming side. This is what this side is. And basically, Super Collider is a dynamic language. It's based in, um, uh, I was just learning this because I was listening to like the Steve Jobs uh, uh, autobiography, or not autobiography, biography. Uh, it, I think it was developed really early, small talk. Uh, maybe Xerox, maybe Xerox Park, but it was one of the first object-oriented languages. In any case, Super Collider is based in Smalltalk, and um, one of the things it does is it allows you to do sort of dynamic, and not sure if this is a Smalltalk thing or a Super Collider thing, but let's just call it a Super Collider thing. It allows you to do dynamic reordering of processes. So let me, let me I'm kind of jumping ahead. Let me start by sim simply saying, um, Generally speaking, now we have like multiprocessors and multi-core things and parallel computing. Um, but I, th I think essentially our programming languages are still in an older metaphor, which is basically do one thing at a time. Computers can do only one thing and one thing at a time. And essentially, or at least our programming languages nowadays are, are geared towards that. And um, order. Uh, but they just do them incredibly fast. So you can do in just a you know, blink of an eye or nanosecond or whatever, 
loads of loads of operations, uh, but they still come one after another. So if you're talking about a more sort of structured text-based language, say a Java or a C, uh, it's it's uh, things are for the most part executed as you write them on the page. So if you have a line of code that says you know uh, draw a blue rectangle, and then you have a line of code after it says draw a red rectangle, you're you're going to have the red rectangle on top of the blue rect rectangle because one draws first and the other one draws after that. Okay, so it's an order. Now with Super Collider, it's still the same idea. You still have to do things in order, except you can dynamically reorder things. And at, at, on, in its base, Super Collider has what's known as a node system. I suppose you can call it that, a node system. Um, let's see if you do, um, if I boot and I do s.query all nodes. There's nothing on it right now, but you can kind of see this node tree. All right, and that's essentially the idea is that you can reorder these nodes and whatever you place on these nodes uh, gets executed uh, according to the tree. All right, now there's a handy little tool that's in the programming environment of Super Collider and they're called groups. All right, but I just, I'm, I'm laboring this point because it's, it's a separate thing from this bus system. So this is a, a virtual thing that's essentially the same metaphor as a patch bay you actually are actually thinking about patching audio from one uh, source or one thing to another. Here, it's very similar, so sometimes it's easy to get confused, but basically you are reordering things in terms of order of execution. So there's this handy thing called groups in Super Collider where you can, uh, you can create these different groups so they can hold a number of different processes, and so you can assure their order of execution. So you have, a, have an input group and assign all the inputs to that group, all the inputs, the, the computing that takes, you know, basically um, you know, digitizes sound in from a microphone or something like that and converts it to ones and zeros, um, uses it as a as a something that's uh, a computer can read and use, uh, can be assigned to say a group and then, like say an FX group, which is all the signal processing that's computing being done, you can by by creating two different groups, you can assure that all the inputs are calculated first before all the effects, any of the effects process are calculated. And then again, uh, a third group where all the out the outgoing to the speakers are processed. Okay, uh, so that's one way of looking at it, but it's different than this, even though this is a very similar kind of thing. So you have to do both. You have to make sure that the order of operations is set. And you can change this dynamically, which is nice. So, for example, you know, if you have multiple effects, you can send one effect, and then let's say you want to change, uh, you know, the order of the effects processing. You say you want to do whatever distortion before reverb or reverb before distortion. Then you could switch those around by assigning them to different groups. All right. And then there's this where the audio is being routed from one thing to another, which is also something we have to account for. Okay. So that's the kind of theory behind things. Uh, where you have um, you have uh, a virtual bus system and then you have a virtual group system. Okay, and hopefully you understand that because that's essentially what we're going to do in terms of the code. All right, so let's go ahead and if you haven't booted your server already, you go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm going to evaluate that, which I'm already running. Okay, and I'm going to create some groups. All right, and I'm just going to use these. So uh, in the fashion of a lot of my videos, I'm going to just do a simple version and then eventually down the line in part 10 or 20 or whatever, I'm going to create sort of a more complex version. So this is a, kind of the most basic version of um, this DSP framework. All right. So the first thing we're going to address, we're going to address the groups. And I'll just put a little note, say order of operations. And then we'll create a group. We'll just call it G0. And easy enough to create, just do group dot uh, new, I think, I believe. And then the target would be your server, which in this case, if it's just a local host, it's S. All right. And then I'm going to create a, a second group. Uh, and I'm going to create that group after this group. OK, so we'll call it G1. And I'll say equals another group dot new. Oh, it's dot after. Okay, and then it'll say which node. Well, we can just assign the group to that where it says node G0. Okay. So basically, I'm going to have a G1 that happens after G0. All right. 
So I'm going to keep this uh, s.query all nodes. It's just going to be a little bit of a, a monitor thing. It can show us what's going on. So if I evaluate those two groups, g0, g1, now if I query all the nodes, you'll see their order. We have a group 1000. So you can see if I just evaluate that g0, it says it's group 1000. So that's first. And then group 1001 would be G1. That's second, OK? That comes second in our node tree. So anything I assign to the group 0 will be evaluated first, and then anything I assign to group 1 will be evaluated after group 0, all the things. So we can think of those as ins and outs, OK? So we, you do have to manage that, and that adds a slight bit more to do in your synthesis and all the things you do. But it's a really handy way of making sure that one thing gets uh, done after another. All right, so now let's do buses, and I'll just call them audio buses, because like I mentioned before, you can do control and audio buses. Okay, and it's a very similar kind of process. Very simply, you can just say B0, we'll call it. We'll say bus.audio, and it will be server S, and you can say the number of channels. So you can have multi-channel buses, but we're just going to keep it to one channel for now. Okay, and I'll go ahead and evaluate that. What the heck? And so this is a different thing now. See, if I query the nodes, the bus doesn't show up because it's not part of the sort of computing order of operations, but it's there. All right, now, uh, just a quick explanation. I don't want to get too into this because it, it does become sort of dry and muddy, but basically Super Collider just is, do, does everything by bus. So if you're sending audio out to one of your speakers, you've sent it to an audio bus and it happens to be just directly connected to your sound card that's going out to your speaker. And generally speaking, the outs are start at zero, bus zero. And then after that, you have your ins, which might start, depending on how many outs you have, might start later on. Okay, And we'll get into that when we get into the synth depths. But basically, everything is done through an audio bus. But what I've done here, this B0 bus audio, I've created what's known as a private bus. So this will be the first available bus after all the sort of physical ins and outs from your audio card. And I wouldn't worry, again, I wouldn't worry too much about it right now, but just understand that this is like the patch bay. It's like the empty bus. It's like the empty jack in patch bay. I've patched it out. It's not going anywhere, but it's going to a bus. Okay, so I can now use that to patch things in and out of to create a bus. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, provide a demonstration. I'll go ahead and um, create a synth def, uh, just a demonstration one, a simple a mic in one. Okay. And so my basic synth def structure. Um, right, and then let's give it a name. Let's call it mic in. And let's just close that up, dot add. OK. Now, um, what we'll do is we'll set up some args and vars. Args and vars, OK. Uh, let's make a var the, the source. And let's call the source equals. And we're going to use a ugen called um, soundin. Okay. Now, sound in, there's in.ar, and then there's sound in.ar. Now, sound in is going to bring the first, so sound in zero will bring the first mic channel in. Like I said, again, not to confuse you too much, but the uh, audio buses are just a absolutely numbered from zero on. And so the actual audio bus might be like four or five. It's the first mic channel in. But in any case, won't worry about it too much. Sound in AR will give you the first in, the actual mic in, the actual physical in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll say um, uh, mic bus, maybe, something like that, or maybe mic channel, like that. Okay, we'll create, that'll be an argument. Okay, so those will be our arg m-i-c-c-h, and let's create a default of zero. So we're looking for our mic in channel zero, ch the first mic plugged in, okay, which for me is just my headset right now. And so then that's going to automatically sound in. We'll bring in the, the sound from that channel. And we'll just now put out dot AR to, and we're going to give the bus itself an, a variable. We're going to call it OBS or out bus. And the channel array will be our source, which is just our mic in. So it's just a in to out. Okay. And uh, then we're going to create the OBS argument. And we won't give it a default. We'll just make it something that we have to 
uh, create when we create an instance of the synth def. All right, let me shrink that just slightly. So we can get a little bit more and you can still see this, everything that's going on up there. All right, so if I have this synth def now and it's mic in, I can evaluate that and then I can create a synth. Um, so we can do that. We can just do an A equals, just for demonstration's sake, synth. And this will be the mic in synth. And we do have to create some arguments now um, because when we create the instance, because this does doesn't have defaults. So we are going to just get it from mic channel zero and our out bus will be now zero, which is our left channel. Okay. Now, the argument that we haven't encountered before now will be our group. Okay. So the third, the first argument is the name of the synth def when you're using the synth function. The second argument or set of arguments are, you know, it's an array, a single array, will be all the, you know, initial arguments from your synth def. So in our case, we have either mic channel or out bus, and we're going to assign the out bus to zero, which is our left channel. Then the third argument is what, if we replace a comma, is a target. So in that case, it could be one of our groups. So since this is our in-group, we're going to assign this to G0. Okay, that'll be the group that it's assigned to. Okay, and then that does it for the synth. Okay, so if we go ahead and evaluate that, I should have my signal coming out of my speaker, which I'm not sure how that sounds for you, but it's working. Okay, so if we go a.free, and we'll free that. Okay, though, you know, we could have just kept it going. So what, what I do want to show you now is I'm going to start it, and then I'm going to set it to a private bus, to the bus that we've created. So a.set. Uh, we're going to, I could just start it going to the private bus, you know, but I'll just show you how that works both ways. All right, so instead of going to the out bus OBS zero, which is our speaker, we'll set it to um, uh, go, oh, sorry, OBS will be the audio bus, which we call B zero. Okay. So if I go ahead and start that again, it's coming out my speaker, but then if I reset the out bus to B0, which is this private bus, it's still working, it's still coming in, it's still going somewhere, but it's just going to this private bus now, which again, if you can picture the empty patch bay, it's going there, it's not being patched anywhere. Okay, so it's going to this out bus, this audio bus. Okay, and now why don't we go ahead and we'll just leave it running there, leave it going. I'm gonna create another synth def. And I'm just going to call this the router. Okay. And again, just our basic structure here. All right. And this one will have a couple arguments. It'll be IBS in bus, and it'll be um, um, OBS, the out bus. Okay. And then we'll have there, which will be a source. And maybe, uh, yeah, we'll just leave that. Okay. So this will just route things essentially very similar to this, except we'll just add an extra step because it'll be useful later on. Um, and you'll see a lot of our things will do this kind of kind of routing. In fact, in, eventually we'll create a template for that. Okay. Uh, and then we'll just do out. And it will be uh, the go out the OBS. Okay. Oh, I forgot to set up my source. Sorry. So let's set up the source. And in this case, it, instead of mic in, since we're going to get it from a private bus, this is just the router. It's like the patch cable that will route one bus to another. We're just going to use the absolute in, in.ar. Okay, so it's going to take our absolute bus, IBS. So uh, whatever bus I get it from will be the absolute bus, whichever that is. And generally speaking, it'll be one of these private buses. Okay, and then it'll go to some out bus. It could be go back into the patch bay to another private bus, or it could go out one of the speakers. So I'm going to OBS um, out, and the channel array will be the source. Okay. So in this case, we'll just uh, evaluate that router and we'll create another set of synths. I'll just copy this business here and I'll just replace A with B because this will be a different set of synths based on the router. Okay, so this is the router. 
And remember, this is still going. I didn't free it. And it's we'll have two arguments for initial initially. IBS will be the bus we set our mic into, okay? Uh, which will be tilde B0, all right? And our out bus will be now the actual speaker, okay? And in this case, the group now, it's G0 will be our ins. Now we have to, again, remember this is the calculation. This is the computing. So we have to compute the ins first, and then we have to compute the outs after that, or any kind of processing that we want to do, right? Otherwise, it won't work. So we have to make sure we assign this synth that's going to route this in signal to G1. So then this gets processed first, and then this gets processed second. Okay? And we don't really need it. Well, we can set it later. You know, we can set it to um, back to the private bus, okay, if you want. All right? So if I just, if I evaluate that, it should be coming out of the speaker because this was already going uh, to B0. It's coming in from B0 and going out. So if I set that to go back out, that's kind of weird because this is going to be zero, then this is going back to be zero. But in fact, it's calculating this first. So this will be gone first, and then this will route it back to the uh, B0 afterwards. But we don't worry about that too much. I mean, I could create a different bus altogether if I want very easily. Okay, But if I set it again to, say, 1 this time to my other speaker, it will come out with my other speaker. All right. And then back again to the thing, or I could just free it. Okay, but this is still going. So if I query all nodes, you can see that it's still going. The mic in. In fact, let's look at the the node structure with this going. Okay, so if we look at query all nodes, um, and I'll set this back to the private bus and leave it running. But you see that it, the group mic in is being calculated first, and then the next group that's the router. Okay. So uh, let me, let's me let end this here and just summarize what we did today in our first tutorial on the DSP framework. Basically, we're looking at the two different systems that SuperCollider requires, a sort of virtual bus system and then a groups or a order of operations system. Okay, And the way you control your order of operations or your order of execution, and it's a, strictly a computing thing, is you create, or an easy way to do this, is create groups and assign those groups an order, and then whatever processes you assign to the groups, they'll run in that order. So I can create a, as many of these as I want, well, within reason, and just continue to assign things in the order that I want them to execute. And I can re reassign them dynamically. System is our bus audio system, which is much like the patch bay, you know, the actual physical analog patch bay system. It's very close to that. There's a few quarks about Super Collider, the way it sort of has numbering the buses, but we don't worry about the, that too much because we can create these, uh, we can assign them to variables. We can create these sort of virtual buses on the language side, and we just can know them by certain names and then let let the Super Collider server work out all the, um, all the renumbering and numbering. Okay, and then we just created a very simple couple synth defs here, one to get the source in and one to uh, route the source, okay? And then here's we're bringing the mic in and we're routing it out. Well, here we routed it initially to the speaker, but then we changed it to go to the private bus. And then the router grabs it from the private bus here and then routes it out to the speaker or back out to it, the private bus again. It's, it's become slightly more complex, our process, from other things we've done before. It seems before we've concluded everything in the synth theft, but also more modular. So this will be important later. So now we have in separate from our outs, and then we can have add a chain there. And, and so a chain of effects. Okay, so much like your pedal pedal boards where you can plug your guitar into a pedal and then plug that into another pedal and then out to your amp. This will do. Okay, so we'll pick that up uh, a few more pieces in part two of this tutorial.